Hi and welcome to this week's Big Picture. So coming up this week, well, there is uh, quite a bit of data. Of course, we've got non-farm payrolls. We've got the Australian, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia meeting um, and lots of speakers. I'll come on to that in a minute. So let's, no further ado, let's run through uh, what we should be looking at. Firstly, from a US basis, now this is priced in, and I would imagine a lot of this is priced into the US dollar. Um, the October um, expectation of a cut in October has dro uh, increased a little bit to 43%. That was down to 34%, but previously it was a lot higher, um, over 50%. It's it's moving back towards that sort of well, may, they may they might. Um, and certainly it's now nearly 70% in December. Again, that figure's moved up significantly. So uh, a further rate cut certainly expected this year, October, maybe, if not October, certainly December by looks of things at the moment. Uh, what's the big money doing? It's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's really not significantly changed, to be fair. It's only minor changes, a little bit of trimming there, but nothing significant. What we got moving this week? Well, manufacturing, um, ISM manufacturing key tomorrow. Got the ADP non farms taster on Wednesday. It's a bit of a funny old number. It sort of moves the market relatively little in real terms. Um, you've got the services manufacturing, service manufacturing, and the non manufacturing or services as we call it. ISM data on the third. Um, more importantly, I suppose, and non farms on the Friday. Um, there are lots of speakers this week, too many to even list here, so uh, watch out for the Fed speakers, but I will update you on a daily basis on my daily outlook. Okay, moving on to Euro. Well, uh, things haven't changed there uh, in terms of obviously I had a meeting last week or a couple of weeks ago now. Um, rate cuts, quantitative easing is not really doing anything. It's really the request for fiscal stimulus. The more you look at the sort of data that's coming out. Now I've gone and put German PMI on the 30th. That should be, um, uh, should have been CPI. <laughs> Inflation uh, was on the 30th there. But certainly the PMI data from last week wasn't good. And it's showing a lack of growth um, in the European region. So um, it needs something and uh, just cutting rates isn't going to do it. Uh, it needs a bit of spending, but uh, we'll see. Um, overall, Euro seems to be on that um, technically on, the, on its way down, as I'll talk about later, but it's weak. It's, 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 it's an easy, easy walk move to the downside. Rallies may give us opportunities to sell. The pound, well, of course, it's Brexit dependent and the, the arguments go on back and forth. Um, it's, I mean, Boris Johnson's doing his best to ensure that the people think that there's, there can't be, uh, if it's no, no deal, uh, it could be a no deal th uh, come October, the end of October. Um, it's basically been taken off the table, but he's pushing that uh, he'll do whatever he does because he needs that no deal option in his bag to be able to negotiate properly. Um, but unfortunately, I think he's, uh, no, I can't say, a, a doing something against the wind um, and not getting too far with a lot of these things. But we'll see. He he may come up with something in, in this month, but it's an important month ahead for him, October. Uh, it's an important month for the country, but it leaves the uh, the dollar, uh, sorry, the pound dollar, the pound itself even um, fragile effectively, and be wary of the bumpy bumpy old ride from fundamentals. We've seen asset managers increase their short positions a little bit. There, the hedge hedge funds have flattened out really. Um, we, what we got this week? Final GDP coming out. So well, let's come out. That's all out. Manufacturing PMI and services out are out this week, the first and the third there, and we've got an MPC member speaking. Now, um, I did suggest that the next cha uh, change may be cu uh, a cut. It was actually um, one of the MPC members speaking last week on the hawkish speakers suggesting that uh, we may see a trim in interest rates sooner rather than later. So um, th things may change there, maybe back down to a half a percent. Moving on then, dollar yen, uh, no change is expected immediately, but there may be more cutting and more um, stimulus needed. Um, they're still waiting at the moment. Aside of that, asset money, it's flattish, negative still on the asset side. Hedge funds dropping down a little bit. 
and we've, we're seeing the uh, the trends uh, it's changing, starting to change and getting more and more dug in in poss possible more uh, yen weakness against the US dollar etc. Aussie dollar um, okay meeting this week in fact tomorrow morning um, a quarter percent cut is expected um, if that doesn't happen we may see the, the Aussie rally for a little bit but that will only give me an opportunity to sell it because I'm quite bearish on it um, a cut is probably pretty much priced in there. What's the big money doing? Well, it's reducing its asset man um, its its positions. The asset managers were reducing positions somewhat, but hedge funds have really piled into it. Um, maybe expecting even more downside there. Really piled in. Um, News-wise, apart from the um, rate decision, we've got retail sales on the fourth and financial stability review on the fourth. So Friday's going to be a busy old day. Friday the fourth. Right, Canadian dollar. Um, okay, last time the hawkish six percent cut expected in October. Well, we'll see um, what happens now. One thing's for sure: asset money is starting to pull away a little bit from the Canadian dollar in terms of belief. It's a neg net negative position here, minus three, just crossed the line there. Um, this might uh, work in terms of the uh, um, U.S. CAD upside potential. Um, that we're seeing there, it's been knocking on the door. Maybe we'll see uh, further weakness if people lose a bit of faith in the Canadian dollar. Um, we've got the monthly GDP uh, tomorrow, and that's pretty much it for the Canadian dollar this week. Uh, then moving on to New Zealand dollar. Well, further rates will are expe uh, cuts are expected in due course. I should imagine if the Aussie dollar's rates are cut, we'll see the New Zealand dollar follow suit. Um, What's happened? The big money dropped out slightly in terms of, oh, sorry, increased slightly with asset money uh, increasing, negative, um, although a little less on the hedge funds. Now I said this uh, in terms of this these numbers, they've gone extreme extreme. Um, the overall net position here is is as bearish as it's been for a number of years now, so it's got quite extreme. Often when we see this, at some point we see a reversal. It may not be yet. I've had a little pitch at it, but uh, may not be in it anymore. <laughs> um, it's um, it's still um, got the potential to turn around, but really, in in you, know, you look at it technically, it looks as bearish as it could be. But uh, uh, it did give a little bit of a reversal view um, when I was looking on Friday so we'll see but uh, watch out there it might turn at some point but may, may, maybe not for a while um, S&P's S&P's well um, a bit more bullish from the asset managers money running back into that uh, and hedge funds cutting their negative position slightly uh, Chinese talks obviously would be a big significant point there um, weekly trend is still bullish of course uh, daily trend slightly to the downside it's getting a bit choppy we could see a, a, a rebound at any stage I guess but uh, I still do wonder so uh, overall summary here of what these markets are which are the strongest currencies well the Canadian dollar in fact should have slipped down a position uh, to a third really in real terms I haven't uh, moved that down there but it's uh, with the sentiment sort of getting a bit net messy although so the yen's the I mean they move it they're all moving down together effectively the the, the one um, currency where we're seeing the strength uh, really still remains the US dollar uh, the, the economy it seems a little bit up better uh, let's say seems maybe it's just the numbers are still coming in better than a lot of the others still showing growth but we just need to keep watching out. But the the one thing I keep on saying, even if the U.S. dollar uh, or the U.S. economy shows some slide there, well, the dollar gets bought generally anyway. In that in that case, so it's going to be a, a a tough case to see the U.S. dollar come off the first listing here, uh, making it a good pairing to be trading. But of course, you can look at the other pairings. Uh, the pound yen pairing in fact they're so close here but have been given some really good moves as late um, as ever but uh, New Zealand dollar rallies may be selling into euro certainly rallies sell, uh, are given opportunities to sell into um, on a daily basis so um, there we go that's where we are today uh, for this week um, I will now move on to the technicals 
Okay, in this section I want to look at the technicals then. So looking then at the Euro, looking from a weekly perspective, still doesn't look very hopeful, does it? It's very much in a downward trend. Can't see anything at this stage that uh, is suggesting anything more than a continuation. So that certainly looks like it from a, a weekly point of view. If we come down and look at it on a daily basis, well, same thing really. It's uh, lower highs, lower lows all the way through. Broken this key area around about the 109.30 area, which seemed pretty key uh, running in um, recently. And uh, well, the last few days we've been uh, dicing around it, retest of it yesterday, oh, yesterday, Friday even, <laughs> and then today sold off. So looking soft, there's arguably people will start looking at this and seeing divergences from the low way back here. And it was to be fair was the absolute low and you compare the two and you'll say there's a divergence across there technically I, I think that uh, having seen this new low come in here well it's uh, it's it, it there's the divergence <laughs> and uh, it hasn't gone anywhere so uh, from from my my point of view I think this is uh, a continued uh, to the downside bias okay so it's the euro the pound look at this from a weekly point of view now I was talking about this this morning's update in terms of it's got a weekly pivot swing sitting there now of course we've got the Brexit concerns that, that may push on this technically etc um, well we'll look to see what will happen from here but at the moment bearish pivot swing there not looking great from a daily perspective it's spot a little bit I was, I was looking at this more of a potential position for a continuation to the upside and some happiness <laughs> Uh, if there was any to come but at the moment it's looking uh, decidedly bearish it's uh, below the it's cross it crossing the moving averages here it's broken through the 21 it's contested that sort of 50 had a, perhaps had a little air kiss of that but coming back towards that that's still facing south the key moving averages are all facing south and it doesn't look great at the moment but um, we'll see of course, as we move through October, um, we we may see uh, more volatility come into the pound anyway. The dollar yen. So the dollar yen, uh, looking at it from a weekly picture, and well, it's I keep on looking at this and looking at trend lines and drawing new trend lines on it. But if we look at these near-term trend lines, well, it really has sort of walked its way sideward out of it at the moment, but looking like it's got for me more upside potential on the weeklies when you come down to the dailies well of course we've seen this um, movement here the higher low came in back here it's pushed up come to some resistance but uh, looking like to me that as a set of said of oh, wow that daily 200 looks like there's potential <laughs> um, well stop clock works twice a day it was right twice a day maybe I'll get right in the end and this will actually hit that 200 but it does technically look like it's uh, on its way Okay, so then looking at the Aussie dollar, and again, a very weak looking downward, lower highs, lower lows, still looking very soft, still no cheer to come at the moment, and I think downside potential will increase. And looking at it from a daily perspective, there's, I mean, it's, it's put a lower high and it pitched up there into the back into its uh, uh, daily eight there, uh, almost 21, and it's, it's it's rolled over from that and consolidated, not selling off high, uh, strong, but it's is coming back down to that 67 area, which uh, well anywhere really above the 6715 area and the 67 area is pretty key. It's a sort of a line in the sand if it starts breaking beyond that, well we could see a further continuation to the downside um, there's nothing I'm just looking if there's any patterns there nothing there Aussie dollar so the Canadian dollar this really is a, um, a boring currency at the moment <laughs> if I've known one uh, this is the weekly picture and the daily picture doesn't look too dissimilar surprisingly just it's a longer version of it because it's been sitting in there that tight old range all of the time so little to be sun, sun done or sung about <laughs> Uh, here it's maybe drifting back a little bit southwards um, 
there was almost reason why they, I mean the Canadian in, economy was holding up it was looking like it's holding up a lot of numbers that are coming through um, but uh, it's uh, not holding up with the, well, the currency is holding still at least at least it hasn't broken through I was looking at that uh, daily 200 I think it was last week and suggesting that well, if it breaks through there we could see uh, more likely to see further upside uh, but to the, what, the speed it's moving goodness knows um, New Zealand dollar okay talked about this a lot and it's um it's pitched a little bit lower today um we're back onto the weeklies here it it looked last week and it sort of was it was doing okay last week and it looked like it could continue now we've got obviously news later today that may affect this still really it's a sort of a sentimental there's no divergence on here there may be on the RSI let's have a look here yeah, there was a bit of divergence sitting on the RSI but there's nothing triggered it would have to break the highs here to trigger it um, you know, tri in terms of triggering that uh, divergence and it's well certainly away from that now today it's just pitched lower um, looking it's towards closing it as I say there's, there's important news later out later on or more news later on need something positive to get this uh, moving at the moment because it's uh, regardless of sentiment it's uh, well maybe it's sentiment the sentiment is so weak because of the um, the trend there so looking looking poor okay that pretty much sums things up or oh, we'll just uh, have a quick look at the S&P's because I know you love me looking at the S&P's look at the futures here so um, weekly picture with well, a weekly picture does look like well at some stage maybe it will push back up there I I'm not massively convinced and uh, yep perhaps if a deal's done we could and that that would be the clincher really if a deal's done that it would possibly uh, push up into those new highs it's always a bias on stocks for, for a push up but there's also the very fact that there's no money to be made anywhere else and uh, anything's better than nothing it may, it may be and if people, more and more people go towards even lower interest rates and negative interest, interest rates um, risk has got to be taken somehow and what's the least risky of the risky assets or risky yeah classes even asset classes there we go uh, maybe stocks or indices right so uh, that's where we're sitting here looking potential for the upside it's just had a little bit more of a roll it's, put, it's confirmed a lower high in over the last week or so and it's uh, it's bitty but uh, with potential there we go have a great week I will speak to you um, next week and of course every morning bye for now mm -hmm.